Your editing is about to get a huge upgrade. This video combines both 2D and 3D into one premium looking animation. We're also going to be leveraging AI for custom high quality assets. I've been paid thousands of dollars for this kind of editing. Now last week I was scrolling on Pinterest and I came across this video likely edited in After Effects. After playing around with it for a couple of minutes, I was able to achieve something like this in DaVinci Resolve. Now before we jump straight into the Fusion page, we're going to be collecting some assets. The rest of the assets I used in this video are linked below. Now if you click the top link in my description, it'll bring you to Imagine Art. I'm going to select the Image tab, and then I'm going to select the model Nano Banana Pro. So first I'm going to ask it for an ID badge for a surgeon at the hospital. I'm going to write that he's tired, has a surgeon cap on, and has red eyes. He also looks a little bit depressed. Now I'm going to throw this image back into the software and say, create me a shot of this man from a 45 degree angle, make it look like a high quality documentary, and he's being interviewed. Now look at this quality we got from 10 seconds of work. If you're not leveraging AI as an editor, you will fall behind. I'm going to select the video tab and select the model I want, and type in, the man looking off into the distance says, I believe this opioid will cure autism and schizophrenia, they will come after my family for this. Using this method, you can invent any character you want and implement them in your edits. This will skyrocket your storytelling, if done right. The last thing we need to do is generate a few textures. For example, metal that has been scratched. This is for our 3D gun. Again, if you want to check it out, the link to Imagine Art is below. It's always updated with the top models, and if you want to see how I use the workflows feature for more advanced concepts, I made a video you can check out here. So we're going to be building the entire animation in one clip. So we're going to come to Effects, and drag on a Fusion Composition Clip. And because it's one continuous motion, we can just drag this out to however long we want our clip to be. Then we can head to the Fusion tab, and because we're starting in a 2D environment for our first kind of page, I'm going to select this box up here so it's just one window. I'm going to drag on a background and connect it to the media out, and then turn the alpha all the way down. I'm going to drag in this background right here and connect it to the background here. This is kind of our base background. Now to create the tape, I'm just going to drag in another background and connect it to this merge. I'm going to select the background and change the color to white. And then I'm going to select the rectangle mask and drag down the height. Select the background, hit shift space, add in a transform, and we can just drag this up like that. Now I'm going to select all this, copy it and paste it, holding down shift, bringing it into my timeline. We can select the transform and drag this one down. Again, copy and paste this, rotate this to 90 degrees. I'm going to select the rectangle and drag down the width, select the transform, and then we can position this where we want it. Last time, we're gonna copy and paste it, select the transform, and drag it over here. Now that we have our outline, we can drag in our image I generated with AI. We're gonna connect this to the merge, hit shift space, add in a transform, size this down, and over here. I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a drop shadow, zoom in here, and I'm going to increase the drop angle so that the shadow is on this side. I'm gonna decrease the shadow strength and decrease the blur. Now that we have most of our page built out, we can disconnect the media out and turn this into a 3D environment really quick. So all we need for that is to drag in this image plane and connect the merge to the image plane and then a merge 3D and connect the image plane to the merge 3D. Now this page is pretty much set up. So because we're doing multiple pages to keep things organized, after each page, we're gonna put a merge so that we can just connect them at the end. So for now, I'm gonna drag this media out over here and build our base 3D environment. So to do that, I'm dragging in a merge 3D, a render 3D, and a camera 3D. The merge connects to the render, render to the media out, and camera to the merge. So now we're in a 3D environment, so I'm going to select the two split screen here, and I'm going to throw this merge into the viewer here. Now I'm gonna drag in my first 3D asset, which is a crushed pop can. So I'm just gonna drag that in right here and connect it to the merge. With it selected, I'm gonna select transform and scale it all the way down. And then I can zoom in here and place it where I want it. So I'm just gonna rotate it, kind of place it up here. Now to texture it, I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a blend and connect this to our 3D object. Now my 3D object came with its own texture. So I can just drag that in and connect it to the blend. As you can see now our 3D object is textured just like that. And now our first kind of page here is built out. So we can select all this and just kind of drag it up here a little bit. Now, before I build our second page and place it over here, I'm gonna to come to our render node and select hardware render. And I'm gonna enable lighting and shadows. I'm gonna drag this merge node to this merge node and drag our camera back. I'm just gonna add in my ambient light and connect it to the merge. Now we can increase or decrease the intensity of the lighting. I'm going to keep it pretty dark so we get harsh shadows. So I'm going to hit shift space and add in a directional light and connect this to the merge. 
As you can see, we have to turn down the intensity quite a bit, and then we can come to the transform and rotate it until we get a nice shadow like that. And as you can see, it's also making our 3D object look pretty nice with the lighting. Now, one more light I'm gonna add in is a spotlight. So I'm gonna hit Shift Space and search for a spotlight. And I'm gonna connect this to the merge node. As you can see, if we drag back the spotlight in our 3D environment, we can see it right here. So again, I'm gonna turn down the intensity. I'm gonna increase this angle so it's a little bit softer light. And I'm gonna decrease this angle so it's a bit of a smaller light as well. As you can see, that spotlight got rid of the shadow a little bit. So I'm just going to select the transform and rotate the X angle on our spotlight so that our spotlight's pointing down. And then I'm gonna drag it up. Now, as you can see, our scene is well lit and we still have shadows. So now we're gonna build our second page so that our camera can pan over to it. So to do that, it's pretty easy. We're just gonna select all of this, excluding the 3D object. I'm gonna hit Command Copy, click over here and paste it. Now, before we connect it, we can just throw our merge into the viewer here. And this is what our new page is gonna look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the image plane and I'm just gonna drag this over like this. Now to see what we're doing, I'm gonna connect this merge to this merge and then I'm gonna throw this merge into the viewer and I'm just gonna drag this until they match right here. Now I'm gonna drag my camera over to the middle. So as you can see, we have this line here and it kind of looks like a cutoff. So what I'm gonna do is come over to my media one, hit shift space and add in a transform and I'm just gonna flip it horizontally. And as you can see, it matches up perfectly now. And so now we can drag our camera and pan over to this one. So right away, I'm gonna hit shift space and add in another spotlight and connect it to the merge. I'm gonna drag it over here and I'm going to decrease the intensity. Again, I'm going to rotate the X axis so it's pointing down and I'm gonna drag the light up. Come to controls and I can increase the intensity a little bit more. So just to recap, we have our first page here connected to a merge node and our second page here connected to a merge node because whatever we connect to this merge node applies to our 3D environment. So with this one, I'm going to change the tape. I want another line down the middle so that it separates two different objects. So first I'm just gonna delete this. I'm gonna select all of this, hit Command Copy and paste it here. Select the transform. And in the inspector, I'm just going to drag this over like this. So right here, I'm going to add in some syringes. I'm gonna drag in my FBX file of syringes and connect this to the merge. With this selected, I'm gonna select the transform and scale them all the way down. As you can see here, they are right here. So I'm just gonna drag them over to this side. I'm gonna rotate the X to minus 90, and I'm just gonna increase the size to about 0 0.004 maybe, or six. Drag this against the background here, and then drag it down. So again, this 3D object came with some textures. So I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a blend, connect this to the, my 3D object, and then I'm gonna drag in my syringe PNG it came with and connect that to the blend. As you can see, now our 3D objects are textured. Now we can add in our ID badge over here. So I'm just gonna drag that in and I'm gonna connect it to this merge here. I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a transform node, just a normal transform because anything before this image plane is a 2D environment. So we can just size this down and then we can place it in this one right here. Again, I'm going to select the media in, hit shift space and add in a drop shadow. Now we're gonna make a polygon line that connects these two pieces of tape as the camera moves. So for now, I'm just gonna drag the camera to kind of the middle of the two. And again, just to keep things organized, I'm gonna drag in another merge 3D for all the lines. So I'm gonna hit shift space and search for a polygon. And I'm gonna drag in a background and connect the polygon to the background. And then I'm gonna drag in an image plane, connect the background to the image plane and the image plane to the merge. I'm going to select the background and change the color to white. I'm gonna select the polygon, right click here, remove polygon line one. And now actually I'm just gonna drag this background into here and I'm going to just draw out a straight line. Now, if we increase the border width, you can see our line. And if we increase and decrease the length, you can see how this is gonna work out. So for now, I'll just kind of keep it like that. And I'm going to drag this merge to this merge. As you can see, our line has appeared. So we can throw this merge into the viewer here so we can see everything. And then we can select our image plane and we can just drag this right here. So I think around 50 is when my camera starts to pan. So I'm going to drag the length all the way down and on frame 50, I'm going to keyframe the length and then I'm gonna to come to about frame 130 and I'm going to drag the length all the way until it reaches the other tape. Now, if we scroll through our timeline, you can see that our line is animated. And so one thing I'm gonna do right here is add in another 3D object of a car. So I'm gonna drag in my car. I'm just gonna connect it to this merge, which is the merge connected to the line. It doesn't really matter which merge as long as you stay organized. So I'll just connect this to that. I'll select transform 
and scale this all the way down. Now I can just drag this over here and I'm going to increase the size to about 0.002. I'm going to rotate the Z rotation so that the car is facing that way. I can zoom in on my 3D viewer over here and then I can drag it up just like this. Again, I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a blend because I have a custom texture. And then I'll just drag in the PNG that it came with and connect it to the blend. As you can see, our car is now colored. Now to make this even more realistic, I'm gonna add some spotlights coming out of the front here so it looks like the headlights are on, creating a pretty cinematic effect. So to do that, I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a spotlight. And before I connect it, I can just select it here and drag it to where I want it. I'm going to rotate the Y axis so that it's pointing kind of like that. And then I can just kind of place this where the car headlight would be. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of place it right here. We can adjust it once we connect it here. So I'm just gonna connect it there. This is how it's gonna look. So as you can see, we just have to pull this back. So now we have something that kind of looks like that. I'm gonna to go to controls and I'm gonna change the color to kind of more of an orange color, just like that. Again, we can play around with the angles to get kind of a softer look. So for the other headlight, we can simply just copy it and paste it. And then all we have to do is slide this over to this side and it creates for a pretty cool effect just like that. And so now after the camera pans over here, the camera is gonna pan down. So we need to create a third page. So to do that, again, we're just gonna select all of this like that, not including the 3D objects because we don't wanna bring that along. I'm gonna hit Command Copy, click down here so we have lots of space and paste it. So when we zoom out, it looks complicated, but it's all pretty organized. We have our first page, our second page, and our third page, all connecting to the merge node. So because we don't need this ID badge, I'm just going to select this and delete it. And we also don't need this last piece of tape we added in the last one, so I'm gonna delete that. And then I can connect this merge node to the merge node over here. Now with the image plane selected, we can drag it down until they meet up. So now if we take our camera over here and drag it down, we can see our last page. So for this one, we can keep it relatively the same. We're just gonna add two 3D objects, a picture frame and a gun. Now we're just gonna place our video of the surgeon talking in the frame. So we're just gonna drag it in our timeline here. We're gonna connect it to an image plane so it can function in a 3D environment. And this image plane is gonna be connected to the merge. We're just gonna select transform and scale it down. And then we can just bring it over in front of our frame here. Now the last thing we're gonna add, we can just add it to this merge node is the 3D hospital bed. And we're gonna place that right here. So I'm just gonna drag this in, connect it to the merge. As you can see, here it is right here. We're gonna select the transform and just scale it all the way down. And then I'm gonna rotate it this way. And then I'll drag it up slightly. Generated this picture with AI and we'll connect that to the FBX mesh. And it creates kind of a bedding look. So now with our camera selected, we can drag it up and then we can drag it over. Now you can animate your camera to do whatever you want. So on a basic level, we can just select transform, go to the very first frame, and we can keyframe these positions here. So we can go over to like whatever, frame 40, and zoom our camera in a little bit. Then we can come back maybe 10 frames, and I'm gonna keyframe the X position. Then I'll come over to maybe frame 140, and I can drag my camera over to this side. Then again, I can come back a couple of frames, and I'll keyframe my Y position. And then I'll go to maybe frame 250 and I'll drag my camera down to this one. Now, if we scroll through our timeline, our camera zooms in and then it follows the line to this side. And then from there, the camera drops down. So that's pretty much it. If you want, you can add in text by just adding them um, into the merge nodes here. And just like that, you should have something that looks like this. Mm -hmm.